some other interesting stuff. This um, uh, apparently Rachel Maddow did this on her show last night, but I'm looking at the story from uh, WTP TOP, which is the local news station here in Washington D.C. Um, which, which by the way, on their on their uh, second channel carries this show uh, here in Washington D.C. And uh, it's I think WTOP might even be the top radio station in the in the city. Um, and so hi to our WTOP listeners. Anyhow, the headline is, and this this is written by Neil Augenstein, who uh, works for WTOP. He's a reporter. Ex-lawyer asks Supreme Court to allow release of D.C. Madam phone records or else. So you'll uh, remember Deborah, Deborah Palfrey, Deborah Jean Palfrey. She uh, was convicted back in 2007 of uh, basically money laundering and, and uh, you know, I mean, they, they, they got her on all kinds of stuff. Uh, I'm not sure that they could get her specifically on promoting prostitution. I don't remember the the all the all the charges, and they're not, you know, restated here in the article. But they just threw the book at her, and she was facing so many years in prison that uh, she committed suicide in 2008. And her lawyer is still in possession of her phone records. She never kept a black book. She didn't have a client list. What she did was she kept her monthly phone bill, which lists everybody who called. And she had released a couple of pages of that as part of her defense back in 2007. And just the couple pages that she released saying she gave them to CBS News, or maybe it was ABC. Uh, she gave them to one of the networks saying, I don't know who these people are. If you can, you know, reverse engineer these phone numbers, you can find out. And sure enough, you know, they find out that David Vitter was one of them, as well as the guy in the Bush administration who was the AIDS czar who was running around preaching that, you, you know, you, you should never have sex with anybody and, and uh, we need to crack down on prostitution. Uh, he was patronizing uh, Deborah Jean Palfrey's uh, escort service, which she went to her death claiming was not a prostitution service, that it was a legal business. But in any case, her lawyer now has the phone records. And he is, and he took these to the uh, U.S. District Court a couple of years ago, three years ago, in 2000, actually, uh, let's see, this was in 2008. He took this to the U.S. District Court, Chief Just, Justice, uh, Chief Judge Richard Roberts, remember that name, not Judge Roberts who runs the U.S. Supreme Court, but he was the Chief Just Judge on, the U, on D.C.'s U.S. District Court. And, and the clerk of the court was a person named Angela Caesar. And he went to them and he filed the papers to say, I would like to be able to release these documents. I am now the legal custodian of them. I own them. My client is dead. She has given them to me. And uh, this should be investigated. And the clerk failed, refused, to, uh, according to him, according to his lawsuit, he's suing uh, both the judge and the clerk for a million dollars each right now. Uh, because they refused to file them, refused to file the papers. And, uh, you know, he, he claims that Roberts, uh, quoting from the WTOP story, he claims Roberts, the judge, the chief justice, has ordered, chief judge, had has ordered Caesar to return his motions without filing them in court ro- records. Then, here's where it gets bizarre. So you wonder, why, why is the judge making sure that the D.C. Madam's records never get released? Could the judge be a little horny, a little hinky, a little, you know, I don't know. But the judge two weeks ago resigned from his job after he was sued for sexual abuse by a Utah woman. Robert suddenly retired two weeks ago, the day he was sued for sexual abuse by a Utah woman, writes uh, Neil Augenstein in, uh, for WTOP today or yesterday. So Sibley now is is appealing this to the Supreme Court, saying that the uh, you know the D.C. court said no, we won't you know refuse to 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 and he's saying that time is of the essence. Denying Sibley a hearing deprives the people of the information they may deem material to the exercise of their electoral franchise. In other words, one of the people running for president was a client of the D.C. Madam. Now. I'm looking at all these clients. Donald Trump wouldn't be, in all probability. He, you know, if he does that, he does it in New York. Uh, he's not living in D.C. John Kasich had already left D.C. by 2002. By the point in time 
at which you know these records are from. Uh, he had gone back to Ohio to be a banker for Goldman, not Goldman Sachs, uh, Lehman Brothers, the company that uh, crashed the the country. That was John Kasich. So he wasn't here. But Ted Cruz was clerking for the uh, for the U.S. Supreme Court at that time. He was here in Washington D.C. And I think I I well actually I was going to share something that I. I think it probably falls more into the category of gossip. Let, 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 me, let me rephrase that. Um, uh, people on my staff have suggested that they uh, have told me that they've been around Ted Cruz uh, at White House functions and that he just can't keep his eyes off the butts of the ladies. So is Ted Cruz, are we about to have another tech sex scandal? I, I, the only other person who could be is Bernie, as far as I can tell who uh, also spends time in D.C., but he spends all his weekends in Vermont. Although, you know, you could write a hook for any time, I suppose. This is the Tom Hartman Program. But I, th- I would put Ted Cruz at the top of this list. What's that going to do to the race? To watch more clips from our programs, hit the Watch More Videos button over here. And please be sure to hit the handy-dandy subscribe button so you'll always be up to date. Tag, you're it.